every movie that I produce is a different complicated challenge and a different bunch of ingredients that have to go and, and make this, this idea take off as a, as a film. So my new project is, is currently halfway through uh, production. It's, it's taken about almost two years so far. And it is a stop motion animated project that is uh, made up of thousands of moving parts and elements. And we have probably about 400 puppets that we're making and hundreds and hundreds of sets. And each one has to be constructed in different sizes and different, different materials. And it's, it's, a, it's a, been a crazy balance of trying to contain this production process and still maintain the creativity so that it can actually you know, become an imagination, a nation and, and fly as a story. Every good movie starts with a vision and, and a good director has a great vision. So you start with this idea of the, this thing, this sort of abstract imagination vision that you want to create and everything has to serve that vision. So you're doing a lot of technical processes, mechanical processes that have to feed into creativity. And all those things I kind of liken to freighters going through the ocean like really slowly and they're all trying to arrive at the same island that's in the middle of the ocean at the, at, at the same time. They're all on the same bearing, all serving the same purpose. And you have to kind of coax and guide them that they all arrive together intact and that the pieces actually fit together when they arrive. Every design process or every creative process is a dialogue. There has to be a give and take, a push and a pull. You have to push the boundaries and hit a wall where something can't be done. And then you say, well, can we build another road around that wall? And we do that every single day with little things and with big things. You know, we'll, we'll push the envelope to make something in a way that, you know, to make puppets skin in it with a material that's never been done before so that they feel more luminous. Things like that that we had to experiment with. And because our process has a relatively short timeline, I know two years sounds long, but um, it's relatively short for what we're doing. We are constantly doing R&D as we are making. And that process of R&D while you're making is a process of success and failure, retooling, rethinking. And we are always reanalyzing what's happening down, you know, a month ahead, three months ahead, and, and trying to readjust. And that's why you need a team that is not too rigid and that is willing to hit walls and discuss and get in a room and figure things out. Because when you do that, you can actually push through these seeming barriers and come out the other side. I think having a, a launch date or a, a finish date or a, with a film a release date is a good thing in many ways because it gives you some parameters to work within. I think if you have a blank canvas, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. As an artist, you can put whatever on the canvas, but if the canvas has no size, it's almost the infinity can be paralyzing sometimes. Um, with a film, we have the realities of a budget and a timeline and, and what we can afford and how much time we have. And that gives you the place to begin problem solving. You can't begin problem solving until you actually know the limits of your problem. I think the job of a producer is to almost erase all the obstacles that are in the way of the progress of the project. And if it feels like the people working on the project are walking simply through it, then you're doing your job well. And I think the result should show uh, the same thing when the project is finished. People should be able to look at something and the space and clarity you've created lets them open their mind, relax, and enjoy the story, enjoy the movie. You don't want them to see the movie thinking about how hard it was to get the weather to cooperate on that day or why that, you know, the fact that that puppet's knee didn't work properly. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that unfortunately haunts us, but our job is to hide it from everybody else because ultimately, if the thing comes together and there is a harmony, then it is something that exists that is above, you know, the sum of its parts and, and it has a life of its own and, and can bring enjoyment and pleasure to people. The idea of reductionism, the idea that, that stripping back and, and getting down to simpler layers of, of explanation, of ideas, of, of image, of design, um, I think is appealing um, to me and appealing to many people because too much stimulus can make you distracted, is, can make you aggravated, and there's that peace that you get when you, you know, look out, out over the ocean or look out over the lake, that kind of simplicity that, that clears your mind and lets you relax is the feeling that people are always searching for, you know, since the beginning of time. The idea of something that is relaxing to look at, relaxing to engage with, it feels good to hold in your hand, feels good to watch, is something that 
will always be important to, to people. And I think that it's not always done because it's sometimes difficult to do or it's harder to do, or it's sometimes not done because people think, well, if I make something brash and bright and aggressive, it'll get noticed, which might be true. A sparkly thing might get noticed. But I think in terms of lasting, it's like, you know, no one's ever going to get tired of standing on a beach and looking out at, at the sunset. They might get tired of, you know, something that has too much of a, you know, too much stimulus going on. I get my inspiration from allowing my mind to live in the moment. And this is, it's different than the idea of, you know, some sort of Zen idea of living in the moment, you know, from a, in, in that sensibility, but it's really just challenging your mind to react, interact, process, and expand based on exactly what's happening in front of me and it at any given time. So I think for me, inspiration is like a state of mind I try and get in that I stop thinking about limits, I stop thinking about where I am, and I just try and react and, and almost get a little bit of a tornado going on inside my head. I think the thing to think about as a creative mind, especially if you're trying to get started on a creative project, is make it your own and don't try and emulate the people that you have loved or respected. I think that you should love and respect people and you should be inspired by people, but emulation, I think, is a, is a bit of a trap. I think that really trying to do something that people might say, that's a little bit crazy, while you're probably likely to fail, is gonna ultimately make you more of an original voice. I think you have to push in your own direction a little bit. And it may sound like a cliche, but it's definitely true because I've seen many a young creative try and do something that is a repetition of what's done before. And at a, at a certain point, you could be a good copyist, but if you wanna become a real artist, you have to have your own voice.